Farming plus reading plus all villains plus agricultural reform, Chang Ning, a farming enthusiast in the future world, dressed up as a vicious villain in the book after her death, but she was unlucky enough to wear it directly to the ending of the book. The male and female protagonists, playing harmoniously and happily, became a divine couple. However, at the beginning, she had her limbs broken, a sharp sword inserted into her chest, and was thrown into a rotten and smelly mass grave. Let's have a grand finale. Changning accepts her fate. Anyway, her wish is to farm, and having a healthy body with all four limbs is enough. She loves whoever holds the position of empress. So as he watched the regent, who had been pulled out of the pile of corpses and was still dying, Chang Ning decisively dragged the major villain in the book and found a secluded village to cultivate land and live a comfortable life of farming. It's just that this field is being planted, accidentally saving the exiled legitimate son of the Minister of Revenue, accidentally picking up an assassin, and accidentally taking in another demon monk watching the room full of villains gathering together in books, Chang Ning's anger surged and he shouted loudly, let's all go to the fields and reform through labor for me. Key Words of the Novel At the beginning of the chaotic burial mound, I led the villain to cultivate land without a pop-dot-up window. At the beginning of the chaotic burial mound, I brought the complete collection of the villain's cultivation and cultivation txt to download. At the beginning of the chaotic burial mound, I brought the latest chapter of the villain's cultivation and cultivation to read. Chapter 1 Opening Burial Post You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Opening Burial Post It Hurts A heart-wrenching pain Changning knew she was dead but she didn't expect it to still be so painful, as if her bones had been crushed by someone. I don't know how long it took, as if the pain of being punished in the eighteen layers of hell had only slightly subsided. She slowly opened her eyes and saw the withered vine trees and countless black crows hovering above her head. The afterglow of the setting sun was unbearable, and the crows screamed relentlessly. Chang endured the pain and propped up her body, only to realize that her limbs had been broken, with a sharp sword still stuck in her chest. It's over, my corpse has changed. Changning felt a headache in an instant. It didn't make sense that this virtue could still be alive. It wasn't that the corpse didn't turn out as he thought. Congratulations to Customer 008 VIP for successfully using Revival Armor and obtaining a chance of Rebirth Plus One, Rebirth Mode randomly selected, Congratulations to the customer for selecting Rebirth Through Books, Memory Import in Progress. Changning's mind felt like it had been stirred up by someone, and for a moment, he became drowsy. After a while, he finally gained a clear understanding of the current situation. The resurrection armor she saved up money to buy gave her a chance to be reborn, randomly reborn on the malicious villain Yi Qingli in a book called Crossing Strange Emotions. Becoming the Emperor's Sharp Pet In the future, although people cannot change birth, aging, illness, and death, technological development has developed the Resurrection Armor Equipment. People who have the money to purchase Resurrection Armor will have a chance to be reborn, but rebirth requires a medium, which may be a book, a TV series, or a game. In short, it cannot be in the meta world. Chang dreams of returning to ancient times without industrial pollution and electronic high-dot-tech erosion, and embarking on a happy farming life. Therefore, she chooses a bunch of ancient Chinese novels, and in the end, resurrection armor is matched into the world of this novel. Although she knew that cheap goods were not good, Chang Ning did not expect that her resurrection armor still had a knockoff version. Unlike others who always go straight back to the beginning of the story, she was fortunate enough to go straight to the last page of the ending in the book. As the antagonist in the book, she harbored hatred for her love and failed to assassinate the female protagonist Yi Qin Ran. In the end, she was ordered by the male protagonist Long Xiang to break her limbs, and Yi Qin Ran stabbed her sword in the chest. Finally, she was directly thrown into the mass grave and pecked by crows. Even a covered straw mat was too lazy to give her a piece. Tragedy is really miserable, but bad is also really bad. In her early years, Yi Qingli was also a gentle and virtuous lady from a wealthy family. 
Due to her phoenix aura, she thought she would become a noble empress in the future according to the imperial edict of the late emperor. Who knew that a time-traveling woman named Yi Qin Ran suddenly appeared, snatching away her fortune and destiny, and making the male lead Long Xiang, who should have been in love with her, move on to another relationship. In the end, she even replaced her as the empress. Subsequently, Yi Qingli fell into a crazy mode, hating fate unfairly and starting to distort her personality to retaliate against society. Eventually leading to destruction. Conforming to the typical villain setting of a time travel novel. A poor person must have something to hate. Just Chang Ning lowered her head and looked at her broken body, some wanting to wipe her neck and die on the spot. As humans living in 2222, the flowers and plants on earth have been replaced by high-dot-tech imaging, and ordinary people can hardly see real green plants anymore. But she has a deep attachment to the high mountains, green water, vegetation, and agricultural products recorded in historical records. Her greatest wish is to be reborn as a farmer after death, and then happily farm and feed pigs. But at present, this virtue makes her die clean. Dear VIP customer number 008, as the system has detected that your current character has a special item called Phoenix Chi Yun, which can be exchanged for a limb healthy body item, will you use the item? Chang Ning was overjoyed and didn't hesitate to say, use it. After using the props, it will be considered as an automatic relinquishment of the Empress's position. Are you sure? Confirm and confirm. Let her drag her hands and feet to become the queen. Isn't this nonsense? People, having a healthy body and physique is the most important thing. What kind of bicycle do you need? Progress bar loading. With a shimmering golden light, the crows around who were pecking at corpses were frightened and flew around the forest, circling around. Curious about the light source, they finally stopped on the branches and looked down. Chiming bathed in this golden light, and her wounds quickly healed before finally recovering to the point of no visible scars. Resurrected armor has been used up. Next time you choose to purchase it, please choose Resurrected Armor Company, limited with the contact key. 888-8888, finally, I wish our esteemed customers a happy resurrection. Chiming moved her limbs and stretched lazily, realizing that not only did the wound heal, but it also reshaped her body, making her feel unprecedentedly relaxed and comfortable, as if she had endless strength. The use of resurrected armor will replicate the client's pre-death brain state. Chiming will immerse his consciousness into the spatial chip in his mind, which is filled with a room full of future equipment and countless crop seeds placed in it. Chiming was so happy that she couldn't close her mouth. With such a sturdy body like a cow and so many grain seeds, she was sure to live a prosperous life in ancient times. As he spoke, he wanted to quickly get up and take a look at this new world, but to his surprise, his right hand propped up against a corrupt skeleton, stained with filth. The foul and pungent smell made her frown in disgust, searching for something to wipe her hands. With a sharp eye, there was a relatively clean piece of fabric in the pile of corpses not far away, which stood in stark contrast to the wreckage on the ground. She reached out her hand and then rubbed back and forth against the dirt on that piece of fabric. At the same time as rubbing against the hands, the tactile sensation is clearly very strong in elastic muscles. He must be the martial arts practitioner in the novel. Chang Ning sighed at the young death of this person. Just as he was about to withdraw his hand, he suddenly felt two faint heartbeats coming from his subordinates. Chang Ning was startled and immediately squatted in front of the person, ignoring the dirt. She pressed her head against his chest. Dong Dong. Dong Dong. Although very weak, there is still a heartbeat ringing. Chang Ning pulled open the two decaying corpses pressing on him, dragged them out of the mass grave, and dragged them all the way to a clean tree. Then, he pulled open the white brocade robe he was wearing and examined his injuries. Like Chang Ning's body, he suffered a penetrating injury from a sword that pierced through his chest. This technique was quite familiar, much like the sword he had received on his own body. Chang Ning wiped his face with his hem, although it was not clean enough, 
he could vaguely recognize a handsome and untapped face. In an instant, the big villain Han Mingyuan, who also died at the hands of the traveling woman Yi Qin Ran, thought of the ending of the book in my mind. This is really a pity for the same disease. Chang Ning couldn't help but sigh. In the book, Yi Qingli fell in love with the male protagonist Long Xiang and became insane. In the end, Long Xiang broke his limbs and died at the hands of Yi Qin Ran. The male antagonist Han Mingyuan admired the time-traveling woman Yi Qin Ran and intended to rebel against Long Xiang for the position of 95. In the end, he also died at the hands of Yi Qin Ran. The two major villains have collectively killed, and Puda is happy to run. The whole article is happily ending. New books on the road, seeking collections, recommendations, and memes, end of this chapter. Chapter 2. Dragging Away the Villains. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2. Dragging away the villains seeing him dying in the hands of the person he likes even though he loves him is considered half a pitiful person. Changning wanted to save him, but then thought that he had framed Yi Qin Ran. Changning hesitated again. What if I save him and avenge Fang En? Isn't this raising tigers as a threat? After hesitating for three seconds, Chang Ning finally decided. Let's face death without saving it. Who makes her a vicious villain? The character has stabilized. As Chang Ning was about to turn around and leave, she felt her ankle tighten and something entangled her. She looked down, but Han Ming Yuan's dirty hands clasped her ankles. Taking advantage of the situation, Han Ming Yuan did not come to her senses, perhaps feeling in a daze that she wanted to face death without saving her, subconsciously seeking survival. Chang Ning sighed. If he were to leave him here like this, in no time, even the most robust cow would have to swallow its breath. It's just that, saving you is not impossible. It's just that in the future, remember my kindness and don't repay me with kindness. Otherwise, I'll go kill Yi Qin Ran. Chang Ning squatted down and looked displeased as he examined Han Mingyuan's wound. He saw that his heart seemed to be in a different position than an ordinary person, so the sword that was meant to be in his chest did not kill him on the spot. It was just a temporary shock due to excessive blood loss. Perhaps it was because he had just touched the golden light on her resurrection armor, which repaired some of his wounds and reactivated his dormant heart function. This may be in line with the ancient saying. Disasters leave a thousand years behind. The fact that neither of the two biggest villains in the book is dead is truly a failure of the original author's life. Changning tore the relatively clean area on his collar into strips and simply bandaged it for him. She doesn't know medical skills, only simple Red Cross rescue, and all she can do is temporarily stop bleeding. As for subsequent treatment, specialized drugs and treatments are still needed. Changning searched his mind for his current position and remembered the ending of the book, which recorded that Han Mingyuan rebelled suddenly while Long Xiang and Yi Qin Ran were patrolling the border of Liangcheng. And at that time, Yi Qingli also took advantage of Yi Qin Ran's fall to attack her. Although both of them ultimately failed, at least it indicates that they are currently located not far from Liangcheng. Changning suddenly breathed a sigh of relief. As long as it's not close to the capital, at least in places like the border, no one will know her and Han Mingyuan. She kicked off the embroidered shoes that were only left on her feet and quickly climbed up the nearby tree. Hanging on the treetops, Changming looks around the world. On one side, there are lush and deep mountains and forests, and on the other side, there are fields crisscrossing the fields and scattered farmers in the distance. She jumped down from the tree, returned to the pile of dead people, pulled a pair of relatively clean shoes from a dead maid, put them on, and then took out a pistol from the space chip and fired a shot at the mass grave. A scorching hot flame shot out from the muzzle, instantly igniting the mass grave. In just five minutes, it burned hundreds of decaying corpses in the pit, leaving behind a pile of ashes. She only wants to find a paradise now and be a happy farmer. She doesn't want to be disturbed or hunted down, so destroying the remains is a must-do. 
No matter what these people died for before their lives, she has now burned them all down, which can be considered as giving them a sense of dignity after death. Crow. You're amazing, you're aloof, you ruin my dinner. Changning carried Han Mingyuan on his back in the cold sound of crows and walked towards the direction of the distant smoke. The countryside may not seem far away, but Changning walked for almost two hours, and it was truly a dead horse running through the mountains. If it weren't for the resurrection armor improving her physique, ordinary people would have long been disabled. Han Mingyuan was more than a head taller than her, and while Chan Ning seemed to be carrying him behind his back, he was undoubtedly dragging him along. By the time they arrived at the village entrance, a big hole had already been worn out on Han Mingyuan's boots, and his thumb was exposed outside to cool off. There is an old yellow horn tree next to the village entrance, full of vitality like an umbrella, and a young girl in yellow clothes is leaning against the trunk to catch lice for the local dog in her arms. Perhaps smelling the scent of a stranger, the local dog, originally lying comfortably, suddenly widened its eyes and began barking wildly towards Changning. Wang Xiaohua, shut up! The little girl roared at the local dog, and the dog indeed quieted down, but still bared its sharp teeth at Changning. Changning wouldn't take a dog seriously, but on the surface, it still needs to pretend, after all, only vulnerable groups can arouse sympathy from others. Ah! With a dog, it's so terrifying. Chang Ning pretended to bark, which startled the dog and even forgot to bite. The little girl didn't know whether she was born simple or silly and cute. She was really confused by Chang Ning's poor acting skills, so she grabbed the dog's collar and pulled it behind her. Sister, don't be afraid, Wang Xiaohua doesn't bite people. The little girl smiled and asked, Sister, what kind of people are you? Changning immediately cried pitifully, Little sister, is there a doctor in your village? My brother has been injured and is about to die. Chang Ning pretended to be physically exhausted and shook twice. Suddenly, his hand loosened, and Han Mingyuan fell to the ground with his back up, making a muffled moan. His bloody chest was exposed so wide. The little girl had never seen such a battle before. She was immediately frightened and turned pale, stumbling and trembling, saying, I'm going to find my mother. After speaking, he ran away in a hurry. But the dog named Wang Xiaohua still stood firmly ten meters away from Changning, vigilantly staring at the tip. Seeing the person leave, Changning crouched in front of Han Mingyuan and whispered, I'm sorry, brother. This is an urgent matter, and I have to do you a wrong. Han Mingyuan Dot. When Han Mingyuan dragged him out of the mass grave in Changning, he already had some consciousness, but couldn't open his eyes. Although he didn't know who Changning was, he also knew that she had no ill intentions towards him, otherwise he wouldn't have walked the mountain road behind his back for several hours. A woman can do this, and just this kindness is enough for her to tie ties, so how can she blame a girl for being physically weak and throwing her to the ground? Yes, I can't blame you. Han Mingyuan comforted himself and then continued to close his eyes to rest. There is a small stream flowing down from Mount Fuyuan in the village, with clear and clean water. As it passes through the village, it has become a holy land for washing clothes for every household in the village. At this moment it was afternoon, and several women wearing cloth clothes with curled hair made an appointment to squat by the stream and rub their clothes. Aunt Chang, your pear blossom is sixteen years old this year. Are you going to prepare for a matchmaking? Hi, what do you mean, dear? That dead girl doesn't stay at home all day, I don't know where she's been fooling around again. Aunt Chang rubbed the clothes in her hand, seemingly cursing her own girl, but in reality, her tone was all about spoiling. Chen Xia felt a surge of jealousy upon hearing this. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Online Racing Performance Skills You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Online Racing Performance Skills She is Su Xian, a newly married hunter from the village, no more than two years older than Wang Lihua. However, she has been responsible for household chores such as laundry, cooking, 
and taking care of her younger brother since childhood. Unlike Wang Lihua, the Wang family almost never forces her to do farm work. Now that she is in the age of getting married, she still lives like a little girl with no worries, which is truly enviable. Thinking of her mother who married herself to a hunter in her thirties as a continuation for two tales of silver, Chen Xia couldn't help feeling sour in her heart, and her words were also somewhat sinister. This girl, it's better to be reserved and composed. She shouldn't go out for a walk, otherwise her future husband's family will know and she will inevitably be subjected to her mother. In Law's cold words. Aunt Zhang noticed the teasing in Chen Xia's words and said with some meaning, what are you afraid of? Only if your family has no ability, are you afraid of your mother. In law. My family's pear flower will get married in the future. If her mother. In law dares to embarrass her and moves back to live, her father and I are really unwilling to let her marry far away. Chen Xia sneered and said, Where do any children get married and go back to their mother's house to live? Isn't this funny? Who dares to joke? Aunt Zhang raised the laundry mallet in Yang's hand and said fiercely, Who dares to joke about Zhang Feng's daughter? I can't beat her to death. A hint of embarrassment flashed on Chen Xia's face, but she replied, How could anyone joke? With your mother who loves her daughter so much, who dares to bully Li Hua? But he didn't take it seriously in his heart. With a mother tiger like you around, which man from ten miles and eight villages dares to marry Wang Lihua? Wait to be a yellow flower girl that nobody wants. When the time comes, only when you marry the blind man Yang from the neighboring village, I see you still can't bear it. Chen Xia was muttering inwardly, burying her head and vigorously rubbing the clothes in her hand. Suddenly, she heard Wang Lihua's exclamation from afar. Mom Mom help me. Although Wang Lihua has been pampered by the Wang family, she is usually well behaved and not as good as the kid from the village's lay family, who loves to play pranks. Upon hearing her cries for help, the several women who were washing clothes together guessed that something was wrong. They all stopped their movements and stretched their necks in the direction she was running towards. Aunt Zhang immediately threw away her hammer and rushed up to embrace Wang Lihua. While checking if she was injured, she spoke anxiously, What's going on? What's going on? Wang Lihua ran panting and out of breath, The village entrance is dead. As soon as these words were spoken, the women present all widened their eyes. Dead. Who's dead? Du Qiong quickly spoke up and asked. Wang Lihua didn't know who died. She was so scared that she tightened Zhang Feng's collar and cried, I don't know anyone. It's not from our village. That person is covered in blood, so scary. Zhang Feng and Du Qiong exchanged a glance and quickly said, I'm afraid it's from outside. Sister Du, you can go find the village chief and let's go to the village entrance first. Du Qiong nodded and turned to pick up the wooden basin placed on the shore. After thinking for a moment, she put it down again and ran towards the village head's house. The others were both scared and curious, so they put away their clothes and followed Zhang Feng towards the village entrance. Their village is called Qinghong Village, and Zhongtan Town is the closest village to Liangcheng, which is the last pass of the border fortress of the Qin Kingdom. In the past few years, there were constant wars with the Yu Kingdom, and the people of the border fortress lived in unbearable hardship. Since the regent sent troops to resist you and defeated the enemy, Chen and you signed a peace treaty, which lasted for seven or eight years. Perhaps due to the slaughter caused by war, the older generation in the village are particularly sensitive to injured outsiders. When Zhang Feng arrived at the village entrance, he saw Chang Ning standing under the yellow horn tree and a man lying on the ground covered in blood stains from a distance. He didn't look like a sneaky person in his attire. Zhang Feng left Wang Lihua in place and cautiously walked to a place not far from Changning. He was a bit cautious and asked, Who are you? What do you want to do in the village? Changning glanced at Zhang Feng and saw other women hiding behind her, knowing that their current appearance was really suspicious. If they couldn't explain clearly, they might be easily driven out of the village. 
Chang frowned slightly, her lips drooped downwards, and she burst into tears in an instant. Auntie, please be kind and save our siblings, okay? We just escaped from the robber's hands, my brother. He's almost exhausted. Robbers. Zhang Feng looked puzzled, do you think there are robbers on our mountain? Zhang Feng let out a loud howl, and the other village women were immediately frightened and disoriented, with a frightened expression. It's over, the robbers are here. The robbers are here. What should we do? Hurry up and move, the robbers will definitely come to the village soon. Chang Ning. Dot. The courage of these villagers combined is not as great as that of the local dog named Wang Xiaohua in front of them. Although the others were panicked, Zhang Feng remained calm and motionless. The defending army of Liangqing alone has 30,000 soldiers. Who dares to openly rob near Liangqing without risking their lives? She has lived in Qinghong village since childhood and has experienced three invasions by the army of Yugua, but none of them were robbers. Therefore, she did not believe what Changming said, and even looked at her with a hint of suspicion. It's okay if you have an unknown identity and are still full of lies. Such people cannot stay in the village. Seeing her expression change, Chang Ning knew that she had exposed a flaw. With a quick thought, she quickly acted up and said, Wu Wu, I don't know if they are robbers either. It's just that everyone is riding high horses with big knives in their hands, rushing onto the official road and killing them in a burst, shouting something about dragon slaying and king. Upon hearing this, Zhang Feng's expression suddenly changed. He covered Chang Ning's mouth and looked left and right. Fortunately, no one around heard him. All right, all right, auntie, I believe you've encountered a robber. Zhang Feng approached Chang Ning and whispered, Girl, you can't say this to anyone in the future. If someone asks you, they'll say you've encountered a robber. Do you understand? Chang Ning nodded in confusion, and Zhang Feng finally let go of his hand. She followed her heart and seemed to have lingering palpitations. Just two days ago, Regent Prince Han Mingyuan launched a surprise attack on Emperor Long Xiang, who was on patrol outside Liangcheng. Unfortunately, he was ultimately defeated and killed. It was heard that corpses were everywhere on the official road, and blood flowed into rivers. Even the land was stained red. The road that used to be bustling with people now looks like a soul returning path to hell. The people would rather spend two more days detouring than embarking on this official road. Zhang Feng looked at the pitiful siblings in front of him and immediately thought of this rebellion. He must have encountered a rebel army on the way and was implicated. It's really two unlucky people. Zhang Feng looked at them with a hint of sympathy and gentleness in his eyes, touching Chang Ning's head and comforting him you have also suffered from an unfounded disaster. Although she didn't understand why this lady was so deeply moved, Chang Ning didn't argue and did enough sad and pitiful scenes. End of this chapter Chapter 4 High and Low Knocking Together You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 5 Village Assembly you are listening at NovelFull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 6 Opposing Opinions You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Opposing Opinions I still have an unused iron pot at home, it's just out of stock, but it works. Then I'll donate a backpack, I made it up last month. I'll donate a stool, there's not even a place to sit in the sheep madman's thatched cottage. Dot. Once someone starts, the people behind them also relax. Although they are all old items, they have basically prepared all the daily necessities that Changning and others need. Border villages, as long as it doesn't cause trouble for everyone and allows for multiple neighbors, everyone is still happy to see it. However, not everyone in the village welcomed Changning's stay, and among them, Chen Xia was the least willing. Chen Xia was married from another village, but her husband went hunting, so she represented her husband to hold this conference. She doesn't like the Zhang Feng family privately, 
let alone looking at Chang Ning from a distance. Even though her hair is disheveled and her face is stained with blood, it doesn't affect that she is a beautiful and outstanding beauty. Chen Xia's only confidence is that she thinks her appearance is still outstanding in the village, and she often relies on her appearance to help the men in the village. If Chang Ning stays, her only advantage will be lost. Don't let her stay, don't let her steal your limelight. Chen Xia silently made up her mind and then raised objections amidst the voices of support. Village chief, I have something to say. Chen Xia stood up cautiously, and everyone's gaze immediately fell on her. She swallowed nervously. What do you want to say? Chao Nian passed by. Chen Xia pursed her lips and said calmly, I don't think we should keep them. They come from an unknown place without a guide, and their identities are unfounded. What if they are spies from the kingdom of you? Spy. Everyone paused for a moment when Chen Xia said this, and then burst into laughter. The spies of you kingdom don't want to sneak into Liangcheng and come to our village to farm. You've been thinking too much, right? said the Niu lightly Cheng Erqing also joined in and said, that's right, are you trying to steal our farming skills? Chen Xia's face showed a hint of embarrassment. Of course, she knew that Chang Ning could not be a spy, just for example. Being mocked by Den Yeo and Er Qing, her anger also rose up. They are not spies, but they don't necessarily have to be good people. Besides, they say they have been targeted by robbers. What if the robbers chase after them and implicate other people in the village? Chen Xia's words really made some villagers laugh and ponder the possibility. Uncle Yang stroked his beard and frowned, saying, what the wife of the Li family said is not unreasonable. They escaped from the hands of the robbers. What should they do if the robbers pursue them? Who in our family has no children or daughters? Who will be responsible if something happens? Chen Xia breathed a sigh of relief as soon as she saw someone standing on her side, and her lips curled up a bit. Uncle Yang is right, you must have a heart to defend yourself, she said, how many years have we been living in the village? Even if Yugua invades, he can survive. How many robbers are he afraid of? Danyo patted his chest. If any non i dot catching robber dares to cause trouble in our village, I will be the first to kill him. Er Ching. Then I'll be the second one. Zhang Feng couldn't help but sneer, all right, stop boasting one by one. If you don't have Chao Ching's skills, you'll just have to keep talking. Den Yo chuckled and scratched his head in embarrassment. Chao Yenxuan was not angry when he saw everyone arguing, but he looked up at the direction of Liang Cheng with a hint of sadness in his eyes. Lao Yang, we've been living together for decades now. Forty years ago, when the kingdom of Chen was first established, there weren't even ten border checkpoints left. You still don't know how many people in the village have come to avoid disasters, why can't we accommodate two younger generations? Upon hearing this, Uncle Yang remained silent for a moment, as if recalling the brutality of the border war back then. He tightened his grip on the crutch and then let go, his expression no longer as aggressive as before. It's just that, if you want to stay, just stay. Chen Xia saw that Uncle Yang changed his hexagram so easily, and she immediately panicked. She quickly said, Uncle Yang agreed now. Aren't you afraid they will bring the robbers to harm everyone? Uncle Yang gave her a cold glance and snorted softly, you're not the head of the family. You don't have any say here. Chen Xia choked and couldn't hold her face. She bit her lower lip reluctantly, and her gaze towards Uncle Yang also turned cold. Zhang Feng knew that Chen Xia had always liked to sing against the villagers and make a name for herself, but she couldn't stand it now. She spoke coldly, do you know why everyone in Qinghong village has different surnames? Zhang Feng knew from Chen Xia's expression that she couldn't guess, so he said directly, because except for the village chief and Uncle Yang, everyone else here has fled. Your family, Li Gui, also moved in from outside the border more than twenty years ago. Upon hearing these words, Chen Xia's face instantly changed. If her identity was unknown, 
wouldn't it be more like a spy if their family came from outside the pass? Why didn't she hear this news before she got married? Chen Xia pulled up a stiff smile and stuttered, I was just casually saying it. That girl seems obedient to me, so she must not be a spy. Zhang Feng glanced at her and didn't speak again. They are all from the same village, there is no need to tear one's face. Uncle Yang left, and Chen Xia also closed her mouth. No one mentioned anything inappropriate about leaving Changning. It was still early in the morning, and everyone still had a lot of farm work to do, so they quickly dispersed. Although Chen Xia felt reluctant, she had to accept the result. She was married from another village, and her husband was still a hunter. He was away from home every now and then, so she couldn't speak in the village. Changning glanced at Han Mingyuan lying in bed with furrowed brows. He was still asleep, probably because the injured area had been reopened and treated with low-dot-quality gold wound medicine. The pain at the wound was unbearable, making his face pale. His eyebrows were tightly twisted, like delicate flowers wilted by the rain, exuding tenderness everywhere. However, Changning was not deceived by this illusion. She did not forget the description of Han Mingyuan in the book, which was a demonic deity that made both the Yu Kingdom and the southern barbarians change their colors. Changning planned to let him leave as soon as he woke up, whether he wanted to seize the throne or pursue his wife thousands of miles away, he would follow him. However, she must not interfere with her farming. She did not want to be entangled in the bloody love and hate in the book anymore. Looking around the room, the entire area may only be around 60 square meters. There is a four-cornered table facing the door, and the crack in the table is already dark and moldy. There are two bowls with notches on the table. Near the door, there is a lame low stool propping up against the shaky wooden door, and then there are no other objects left. A clay stove was built in the yard, with only a black round bottomed pot on top. Inside was a pot of boiling water that Erqing had just helped to cook. Although Changning yearns for a simple life as a farmer, she does not have a tendency to be abused. What she pursues is a relaxed and comfortable life, where she can leisurely watch the flowers blooming and falling in front of the courtyard, and quietly observe the days of clouds rolling and relaxing outside the sky. But the current situation is far from the day I've been dreaming of, and I still need to work hard. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Is this a fairy? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Is this a fairy? Just as dinner was not yet ready for today, I heard a commotion coming from outside the thatched cottage, from far to near. Changning walked out the door and saw more than ten people walking towards her with various things in their hands. Sister, we've brought you something. Danyo took the lead, carrying a stool on his shoulder and supporting it with his left hand. He also carried a bag of rice in his right hand and shouted loudly at Changning. Changning was a bit confused and took two steps forward, asking, sending something. Don't you decide to settle down in the village. This is the big guy's intention. Although everything is not new, I hope you don't dislike it. As they spoke, everyone began to unload the goods, including stools, wooden barrels, pots and pans, grains, vegetables, firewood, rice, oil and salt. Although not necessarily valuable, they were enough to meet the daily needs of Changning for several days. Changning looked at the crowd with moved eyes and thought to himself, what kind of immortal village are these? Not only does he not exclude them from being taken in, but he also offers love from every family, which is like reincarnation of a living bodhisattva. Recalling the real world where she lived, people lived in towering buildings surrounded by the crystallization of electronic technology, and there were hardly any jobs that required manpower. There is basically no social interaction between people, and they are all immersed in their own science fiction world, living their lives aimlessly. It's really a long time since they've experienced such pure care. Chining bowed to the crowd and sincerely said, Thank you all for extending a helping hand. If there is a place to obtain Changning in the future, Changning will definitely go through fire and water. Ching Erqing smiled and said, It's not that serious. This is a village, not a battlefield. 
The others felt relieved when they saw Chang Ming being so easy to talk about, and agreed, that's right, it will become a village in the future. Don't hide any difficulties. Chang Ming nodded in response. Everyone made a self-introduction to let Chang Ming recognize people, and then put down their things to do what they should do. Only Den Yo stayed temporarily to help Chang Ming tidy up. The room was filled with furniture and daily necessities, and finally there was a hint of fireworks. Den Yo saw two sunlight spots on the table and looked up to find two holes on the thatched roof. He found a ladder to put on the eaves and carried two pieces of dry straw under his armpits to the roof. There are too many decaying moldy straw in this thatched cottage, but there are still injured people living in the room, so it is not easy to replace them all. Danyo temporarily blocked the hole to prevent the house from leaking due to rain. When he came down, Chining himself picked up a few straws and made a simple bed in the corner on the other side of the room. Then, he covered the straw with a layer of bed sheets given by the villagers, making it a place to stay at night. Danyo couldn't bear it and said with red eyes, Sister, you can come stay at my house tonight, and I'll watch over your brother for you. Without hesitation, Chang Ning refused, Big Bull has already helped me a lot. I'm sorry to trouble you again. I have no problem with it myself. It's not troublesome, my mother is the only one in my house, so I won't cause any trouble. Seeing that Chang Ning didn't agree, Den Yo said anxiously. Big Bull, I understand your kindness. I'm not as noble as you think. Chang Ning smiled gently which instantly made Den Yo feel his heart beating faster, and his dark face was red and almost bleeding. Big Bull, are you okay? Chang Ning saw that he had a slow reaction and felt as if he had been immobilized. Just as he was about to step forward to check his condition, Den Yo was suddenly startled and stuttered, saying, I have something else to do. Let's go first. Before Chang Ning could thank him, she saw him rush out of the door in a panic. This is really a bull's temper. If you say change, it will change. After some turmoil, Changning also felt a bit hungry. She saw that the fire on the stove was not yet extinguished, so she added another piece of wood to increase the fire, and then placed two washed rice in the boiling pot. Wait until the kanji is almost cooked, twist the vegetables given by the villagers into small pieces and put them in. After another ten minutes of low fire, Open the lid of the pot and smell the delicate smell of kanji. Chang didn't forget Han Mingyuan, so he went in to look at him and saw that he had no sign of waking up, so he went back to the pot with peace of mind and put all the kanji out. He sat on the threshold and ate the first meal after his rebirth leisurely. The freshly cooked kanji was a bit hot. Chang blew it and carefully sucked it away. Although the rice is not as crystal clear and delicious as in the real world, Changning's heart is unprecedentedly comfortable and satisfied. A bowl of kanji soon went into her stomach. Changning felt that her stomach was still a little empty, but now she could not help but eat it, so she had to bear the hunger and wash the dishes. Next, she boiled two pots of water and took a shower in the simple thatched cottage built behind the thatched cottage, changing into the old clothes given to her by Zhang Feng. The clothes she was originally wearing had several holes torn and were stained with a lot of blood. Changning originally planned to throw it away, but now that she is penniless, the fabric of this garment is so precious. If you keep it and change it to an inner outfit or a purse, it's also good, so I picked up the clothes again. The small stream flowing down from Fuyan Mountain happened to flow not far from the thatched cottage. Chang took the dirty clothes from himself and Han Mingyuan and went to the stream. Perhaps because the people who used to live here were crazy, this thatched cottage was built in a somewhat remote area, several hundred meters away from other villagers' houses. But at this moment, while she was washing clothes, she had already seen seven or eight people seemingly walking past her, staring at her vaguely. It has been a long time since outsiders settled in Qinghong village, and some villagers who have not yet seen Changning have taken a detour to see what the new residents look like. At this sight, he was amazed by the heavens and the people. Previously, it was only known that good-looking women were called fairies, but it was unclear to what extent they needed to be good-looking. 
until everyone saw Chang Ning, who had changed into neat clothes and washed her small face. I thought to myself, so this is a fairy. And this fairy sister has a surprisingly good temper, responding to everyone with a smile without any affectation. For a moment, everyone's liking for her doubled, and even Lei Yang, who had some prejudices against Chang Ning at the beginning, silently shut up. After washing clothes and going back, it was already late and there were no candles at home. Chang Ning washed up early and entered the room. On the right side of the entrance is the wooden bed where Han Mingyuan slept, while on the left is the haystack she laid herself. But it looks no different from a doghouse. As she lay resting on the dog bed, a unique smell of straw came from the tip of her nose, which was not pungent, and even had an inexplicable sense of comfort. Before Chang Ning's death, she had already simulated many different farming lives using electronic imaging. However, although electronic imaging could truly experience farming life, it had no sense of smell. Now lying on the haystack, stretching lazily, Chang Ning feels that the reality of all five senses is the life he pursues. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Self-Doubt You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Self-Doubt In order not to owe too much favor to the village and appear like a lazy waste, Chang Ning decided to investigate the surrounding soil tomorrow and choose a suitable place to cultivate land. She closed her eyes to sense the spatial chip in her mind, roughly counted the seeds of various crops, and simply planned her planting process after clearing the land. She made a perfect plan based on the current season, and then closed her eyes with satisfaction. After a day of tossing and turning, Chang Ning slept very peacefully, not noticing the gaze falling on her. Shortly after Chang Ning fell asleep, Han Mingyuan opened his eyes. I don't know if the herbs that Chao Nianxuan applied to him worked or something, but before nightfall, Han Mingyuan had already regained his mobility. Although you can't make two big moves, simple neck movements are not a problem. He took advantage of Chang Ning's sleep before cautiously opening his eyes, holding doubts and turning his head to look at the woman who had saved his life. When he saw Chang Ning's gentle and quiet sleeping face sleeping on a pile of straw, his heart was filled with fear. In his subconscious, he had guessed countless possible people, but he never expected it to be Yi Qingli, the malicious woman who, in order to become the queen, spared no effort in falsely accusing and calculating Ran Ran multiple times. Ran Ran. Just as Han Mingyuan thought of it, his heart, so angry that he gritted his teeth, suddenly subsided inexplicably, like a newly rising anger suddenly extinguished by a basin of water. Han Mingyuan felt strange, why suddenly couldn't he get angry? He used to hate hate Yi Qingli very much, but why now when he sees her sleeping in a corner, without even covering herself with a blanket, curled up like a pitiful little dog that no one wants, his first reaction will be unbearable. How could he feel guilty about that wicked woman Yi Qingli? Shouldn't he like Yi Qin Ran and dislike her? Han Mingyuan closed his eyes and reminisced about the time he spent with Yi Qin Ran. Originally, he wanted to awaken his love for her, but when he remembered his past actions, he only felt that his former self was humble and had fallen into the dust, like an incurable big licking dog. He thought he would love Yi Qin Ran for a lifetime, but now when he thinks of her again, all he can do is see her repeatedly exploiting and deceiving him, as well as her cold and ruthless sword outside of Liangcheng. Han Mingyuan's eyebrows furrowed, and an indescribable strange feeling rose in his heart. He entered the military camp at the age of thirteen and never suffered a single defeat on the battlefield. He was naturally arrogant and arrogant, and even the little emperor Long Xiang had never paid attention to him. However, when he saw Yi Qin Ran, he seemed to have been lowered and lost all his principles and bottom line. In order to please her, I am willing to step by step give in and make many unwise actions for her time and time again. Even the military talisman has been entrusted to her for safekeeping, otherwise Long Xiang would have no chance of winning over him. But every time he made up his mind to take the life of Long Xiang, as long as she smiled at him and said a few gentle words, he would sink like a lost mind. Even if he wanted his life, he could not hesitate to offer it with his hands. Looking back now, 
Han Mingyuan couldn't pick up any love for Yi Qinran. He only felt that the proud eagle in the sky had turned into a shameless licking dog in the sewer. Is he really the regent who aspires to break through the three kingdoms and sweep across territories, doing so many embarrassing things for a woman who doesn't love him? Han Mingyuan fell into deep self-doubt if Chang knew what he was thinking at the moment, he would definitely tell him that the reason why he was so obsessed with Yi Qinran like a madman was entirely due to a love brain author. Just like Yi Qingli, the legitimate daughter of the Prime Minister's mansion and the proud daughter of heaven, who was inexplicably stripped of her phoenix life due to the existence of the traveling woman Yi Qinran, and became a vicious female villain obsessed with love, completely unrecognizable. At the end of the book, the original plot should have come to an abrupt end, but due to Changning's rebirth, the plot has been able to continue to develop. But it also broke the shackles of the character design in the original book. Han Mingyuan was proud and noble throughout his life, supporting the entire court with his own strength. He was a rational and sober person like the Beidou Emperor of the Qin Kingdom. If it were not for the distortion of the character portrayal in the book, he would never have been willing to fall. When reading a book, people may exclaim, heroes feel sad about beauty. However, in the real world, beauty may not be as good as half a cup of wine for Qin Xiu's dominance. Moreover, in the book, Yi Qin Ran only used Han Mingyuan from beginning to end without any affection. On the second day, Chang Ming slept until three days in the sun before getting up. Her place is remote, and even a few barks of dogs and crows of chickens cannot be heard clearly, which makes it rare for her to have a peaceful sleep. After waking up, Chang Ning rubbed her fluffy hair and went to the bedside to check on Han Mingyuan's condition. Seeing that he was still asleep, she carried a basin and went out to wash up. When he returned, Chao Nian Shun and Dan Yo came again, carrying herbs in his hand. He should have come to change medicine for Han Mingyuan. Good morning, village chief and big cow brother, Chang Ning greeted with a smile. Chao Nianxuan saw that her spirit and spirit were good, and there was no hint of disdain for the environment on her face. On the contrary, her complexion was even better than yesterday. It seems like you're resting well, so I can rest assured. Chao Nianxuan asked, Did your brother wake up at night? A hint of embarrassment flashed on Chang Ning's face. She slept like a dead dog last night, and little did she know that Han Mingyuan had not woken up. Although she had done a very incompetent job as a caregiver, Changning had no remorse at all. No, I definitely haven't woken up. If she wakes up, she will definitely struggle to get up and kill her, right? So she's living well now, she must have never woken up. After Changning finished speaking like this, he saw Han Mingyuan lying on the bedboard, whoosh, open his eyes, his gaze heavy with a hint of a smirk, staring at Chang Ning like that. Chang Ning's face instantly turned white, and she instinctively took two steps back. Dan Yo exclaimed in surprise, Brother, you're awake. When Chao Nian Shan looked at Han Mingyuan's sober expression, his eyes suddenly changed, but he immediately restrained his emotions and was not seen by anyone else. Hmm. Han Mingyuan replied softly, and then the weak Chao Chao Nian said, Thank you to the village chief for your life. Saving kindness. One day, I will surely repay the village chief's kindness with grass and bamboo rings. Chao Nianxuan breathed a deep sigh of relief, but fortunately, Han Mingyuan didn't say anything about being a cow or a horse or raising the elderly to see him off. He really wants to live another two years and not be in a hurry to die. It's all a matter of lifting a finger, young master. Don't worry about it, Chao Nianxuan said with a hint of respect in his voice. I want to examine the wound for young master. I wonder if you mind. Han Mingyuan said calmly, It's okay, thank you, village chief. Chao Nianxuan opened the gauze on Han Mingyuan's chest, and due to the herbs, the area around his chest was covered in green oil. Apart from being slightly red, swollen, and ferocious, the wound was no longer as terrifying as it looked yesterday. End of this chapter Chapter 9 How Far You Go You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 
How far you go, the wound is healing well, as long as you don't make too much movement to tear the wound, and after a few days of rest, you can get out of bed and walk. Han Mingyuan was originally a martial arts practitioner, and his physical fitness was not even a little better than that of ordinary people. As long as he didn't risk his life, he could walk on the ground in no more than three days. Thank you very much, village chief. You're welcome, young master. Den Yeo's gaze wandered back and forth between Han Mingyuan and Chao Yenshuan, feeling that their conversation sounded a bit strange. The village chief seems to have a particularly respectful and polite attitude towards Brother Changning, without any trace of the village chief's authority. Big Bull, what are you fooling about? Changning poked his head out from behind the big cow and whispered a question. Den Yeo saw Chang Ning's elegant and refined face, and a layer of blush surged inexplicably on his face. His mind was as chaotic as a paste, and his doubts were instantly thrown out of the sky. I'm not in a daze. Den Yeo stuttered out a few words and turned his head to one side, not daring to look at Chang Ning. Chao Yinchuan changed the medicine for Han Mingyuan and helped him lie down. When he turned around, he saw the shy and evasive expression of the big cow, and he shook his head helplessly. Chang Ning is a beautiful and kind-hearted woman who doesn't show any airs like a young lady to the people in the village. She is truly a rare and good girl. It's not that Daniel is bad, it's just that people who have been used to seeing mountains and rivers for thousands of miles since childhood and experienced magnificent waves, how could they be blinded by a small ditch? It seems that I need to wake up Daniel early to prevent him from getting trapped and unable to extricate himself. Daniel, let's go, don't disturb the young master's recovery. Chao Yinshuan turned around and walked out the door without stopping for a moment. Upon seeing this, Den Yeo quickly picked up Chao Yinshuan's dressing change package and chased after him. When he walked out of the door, he didn't forget to turn around and remind Chang Ning, sister, brother. Let's go first. You have something to do. Remember to come to me. The hesitant look of turning back three times at a time made Chao Yenshuan resent the iron for not turning into steel. After seeing the person leave, Chang Ning stood at the door feeling the sight of Han Mingyuan falling on him, feeling a tingling sensation on his scalp. She didn't know what kind of expression to use when facing him, worried that Han Mingyuan might have a killing intent on her, and also worried that Han Mingyuan would see through her current identity. In the book, Han Mingyuan is a cunning and ferocious werewolf even more cunning than Long Xiang. He is truly the biggest villain in the entire book. Compared to his methods, Yi Qingli's calculations are simply not on the table. How long do you plan to stand there? A cold voice sounded from behind, making Changning spine cold. It's just that, we have to face it sooner or later. What's to be afraid of? She is a leading figure in the future world pioneer, and she can still be afraid of an ancient person in the book. What a joke! Encouraged in her heart, Chang Ning turned around and revealed the most beautiful smile of her life to Han Mingyuan. Ah! Is the prince awake now? Han Mingyuan looked at Chang Ning's flattering expression and his forehead twitched fiercely. Put away your fake smile on your face, I'm afraid I can't wait for my king to wake up. Look at what you're saying, if I wanted you to die, I wouldn't have saved you yesterday. Although she didn't really want to save her at the time, now she has to grasp the handle of being a life.saving benefactor and stand on the moral high ground. Thinking of Changning carrying him across mountains and mountains yesterday, and even kneeling down to plead with villagers such as Chao Yenshuan to save him, it is impossible to say that he is not grateful. Han Mingyuan put aside his outward pressure and his emotions softened in an instant. How do you want me to repay you? Han Mingyuan's words are sincere. He truly wants to repay Changning's life. Saving kindness. As long as Changning's demands are not excessive, he will do his best to meet her. Changning's gaze wandered unabashedly around Han Mingyuan his chest wrapped in a thick bandage, his upper body exposed, and his strong chest muscles and thick arms exuded a strong masculine charm. Han Mingyuan saw Chang Ning's gaze fall on him, with a slight curve on his lips that was imperceptible. 
he was full of confidence in his figure. You can tell me, as long as I can do anything, I can try my best to satisfy you, but don't think about me. Before Han Mingyuan could finish his haughty words, he was interrupted by Chang Ning, I want you to leave the village immediately after your injury is healed, no matter how far you go, never appear before my eyes. Dot. Han Mingyuan remained silent for a long time before realizing what Chang Ning had said. Almost instantly, a fierce aura suddenly flashed, and he gritted his teeth and said to Chang Ning, What did you say? Chang Ning was startled by his suddenly gloomy expression, and his subconscious tone weakened by two points. Didn't you say that I could try my best to meet any demands I made? You just don't want to see me like this. So why did you save me yesterday? Chang Ming's tone was slightly imperceptible. Isn't that because you were entangled and forced into helplessness? Han Ming Yuan's chest was heaving and he felt that his years of cultivation had completely collapsed at this moment. Even when I saw Yi Qin Ran marry Long Xiang with my own eyes, I was not so angry. With this life. Saving grace, he is the only one who takes it seriously. Han Mingyuan was so angry that he spoke without hesitation. Okay, I will leave immediately after my injury is healed, and I will definitely not appear in front of you again. Chang Ning saw him look like a cat with fried fur, showing its teeth and claws, afraid to approach. He picked up the backpack behind the door and said to him, I'll go around and see if there's anything to eat. There's water by your bed, take care of yourself. Without giving Han Mingyuan a chance to react, he snatched the door and fled, as if there were some Shura ghost temple behind him. Han Mingyuan's anger filled his heart and he was implicated in the wound. The pain instantly calmed him down. Looking back on my childish demeanor just now, it was really childish. He found that there seemed to be many different parts of himself since he woke up. I am no longer infatuated with Yi Qin Ran, and even have no attachment to imperial power, let alone carrying a noble demeanor all day long and seeing all things in the world as enemies. Laugh when you're happy, vent your anger when you're not happy, and sometimes even act coquettishly. Han Mingyuan was startled by his own thoughts, and such a carefree and unrestrained feeling was something he had never felt before. It seems that something has broken free from confinement in the dark. Behind the thatched cottage, there is a mountain range called Fuyan Mountain, which starts from the west and connects to the south. It stretches for hundreds of miles, with crisscrossing ravines and towering peaks. Among them, there are countless birds, fierce beasts, and dangerous situations. Except for the outskirts of Fuyan Mountain, there are few people stepping inside. Chang carried a basket on her back and headed towards Fuyan Mountain. She said that if she wanted to go out and find some food, it was not just to avoid Han Mingyuan's anger, but to really need to find some ingredients. The vegetables given to them by the villagers were only enough for three to five days of frugality. Although the rice given by the village chief could still hold on for a while, now Han Mingyuan is clear-headed, and the two of them have a considerable appetite when combined. You can't wait until your family runs out of food to come up with a solution you need to learn to be prepared for the future. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Climbing the Mountains to Search for Food You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Climbing the Mountains to Search for Food Chang walked down the trampled path to the foot of the mountain, where there was a vast expanse of overgrown wilderness. It seemed that someone had tried to plant something before, and one could vaguely glimpse vegetable beds through the grass. But later on, it may have been abandoned and the wasteland cultivation stopped halfway through. Chang broke a branch on the roadside and poked the soil, which was very tight on the surface. If you want to plant vegetables, you need to loosen the soil well and put in some effort. This place is not far from her thatched cottage, which is very suitable for her. Chang decided to go back and ask Chao Nianxuan. If this place is not favored by others, she decided to open up the land. Then Chang continued walking towards the mountain. The vegetation in the mountains and forests is dense, and sunlight can only cast speckled spots on the path through the gaps in the leaves. In addition, the early morning wind still carries a hint of coldness. 
Changning's walking on the road is not only not hot, but also a bit chilly. She walked two miles, not to mention wild chickens, rabbits and other living creatures, she didn't see a single mushroom or wild vegetable. It is estimated that it is too close to the village and has already been looted by the villagers. Chunming didn't want to go back so early and glare at Han Mingyuan, nor did he want to return without success, so he walked two miles towards the mountains and forests. Originally, there were small paths that were specifically stepped on by people on the periphery, but as they deepened, the road became more difficult to walk on, and even many places couldn't see the path. Changning is not afraid of any ferocious birds or beasts in the mountains. Although she doesn't know so dot called martial arts, the things in the spaceship are completely safe for her. She just didn't want to bring future technology into this world after being reborn, so she tried her best not to use those things. So Chang Ning stopped in frustration, not intending to go deeper, and prepared to rest before returning. There was a mountain spring flowing down from the mountain by the shade of the tree. Chang Ning was thirsty, so he walked to the spring and took a sip of water with his hand. The unpolluted mountain spring has a sweet and delicious taste, and if one bottle can be taken back for auction, it can be sold for at least several hundred thousand yuan. It's still better in ancient times. Gold is everywhere. When she was satisfied with her drink, as soon as she stood up, she found something dark on the soil slope opposite the mountain spring. The sunlight reflected on it, and there was even some green light shining. Thinking of the rural life I had experienced in an intelligent simulator, the word vegetable instantly jumped to my heart. Today's main course is ready. Changning ran towards the vegetable with joy and joy. Dai Pai Kai, also known as Dimu Air, grows on damp soil or stone surfaces and usually grows in patches after rain. The whole body is brownish yellow and looks like a fungus. It is rich in protein, amino acids, polysaccharides, and various vitamins. It is stir fried with some clear oil and spicy millet, and the taste is excellent. The only drawback is the same as the fungus. It hides sand and needs to be washed back and forth many times to clean up the impurities inside. Chining gently peeled them off the ground, their cold and tender touch resembling jelly. They were rinsed in water and each one was as transparent as jade. She evenly put the peeled vegetables into the basket, sprinkled some water on top, and then covered them with a layer of leaves to prevent the temperature from rising and drying them at noon. Daipai Kai is much more fragile than Auricularia auricula. If the temperature exceeds 20 degrees, it will gradually wither and wither. If you miss the picking time, it will quickly melt into the soil. Changning is grateful for her good luck today when she met a vegetable growing on the edge of a mountain spring. Twenty minutes later, looking at the basket covered with a layer that was enough for the two of them to have an extra meal at noon and evening, Chaining stopped contentedly and then returned to the edge of the spring with his buttocks up to wash away the mud and sand from his hands. At this moment, there was a rustling sound coming from the small earthen slope not far from the spring. Chaining did not feel any wind, but the grass on the earthen slope was windless. Wild rabbits are accustomed to digging holes and building nests on the slopes by the water, especially those with weeds as cover at the entrance. It's like a furnished room that can be carried with a bag, and they are loved by rabbits. She rolled up her sleeves and tiptoed towards the grass. As she approached, she could vaguely glimpse something black moving slowly through the cracks in the grass. Chiming held his breath and stared, then pounced on it with a fierce force. The thing struggled violently after being startled, rolling up grass shavings and scattering them everywhere. It wasn't until she felt the smooth and bare touch in her hand that Chang Ning could see the full picture of this thing. It wasn't until then that she realized it was a rabbit, it was clearly a black snake. Speaking of which, it is now mid-March, which is the time when snakes begin to awaken. This snake should have just come out of hibernation to search for food, but it happened to hit Chang Ning's hand. Chang Ning pinched the snake's head with one hand and grabbed it seven inches with the other. The black snake no longer struggled recklessly, but coiled along Changning's arm a few times, attempting to use its strength to break her slender hand. 
Chiming felt a bit uncomfortable being entangled, and with one force from his subordinates, he directly crushed its heart. It's really unfortunate. Even if we sleep in a little longer, we won't lose our lives. Although the rabbit was not caught, this black snake also has strong uses, as it can be used for nourishing soup and also as medicine for health preservation. It's just that Han Ming Yuan's body is weak and not replenished, so snake soup is definitely not drinkable. Nowadays, with meat and vegetables in hand, Chang Ming no longer needs to waste on the mountain, so he carried his backpack and went down the mountain. When she returned to the village, she went straight to Chao Nianxuan's house. Chao Nianxuan was sitting on the threshold rolling tobacco, tearing off a yellow-brown tobacco half the size of his palm, then using his hand to crush the tobacco and sprinkle it on top. He then rolled the tobacco in one direction, folded it in half, and stuffed it into the tobacco stick. He approached the small stove in front of him with his cigarette stick, and when he saw the tobacco being ignited, he waved his hand and extinguished the open flame before putting it into his mouth and taking two deep breaths. The tobacco sparks on the cigarette stick lit up and quickly burned. Chao Nianxuan took out a puff of smoke and frowned somewhat dissatisfied. Tisk, it's too soft. As soon as he looked up, he saw Chang Ning walking towards him through the field ridge. Chao Nianxuan quickly got up and walked to the edge of the courtyard, shouting to Chang Ning, Girl, has your brother's wound been recurrent? Chang Ning smiled and said, No, he's fine. Upon hearing this, Chao Nianxuan finally calmed down and took a puff of his cigarette. So, what do you need to help with? Chang Ning had already walked up to him, and only then did Chao Nianxuan notice that Chang Ning was holding a dead snake in his hand. Village chief, take this snake and soak it in wine to drink. Chang Ning handed the snake in his hand, and Chao Nianxuan's eyes lit up with a hint of joy. You're really brave, girl. You dare to catch the black mountain sickle. Chao Nian casually scolded Chang Ning, but honestly took it over. The Wuxiao snake has a non-toxic and gentle personality, and is not very good at biting people. Even if bitten, it is not a big deal. However, what Chao Nianxuan did not expect was that Chang Ning had such great courage. Not to mention that she looks like a delicate young lady, even the women who have lived in the village since childhood are mostly afraid of snakes. This was unexpected for Chao Nianxuan. End of this chapter